a spherical intersecting pattern of the flower of life which generates 64 tetrahedron grid. Guardian of the knowledge. Uh, fairly old, but the, this, uh, this section of China was largely rebuilt and fairly recent, uh, you know. But it's all coming from very ancient tradition that's passed on orally throughout the ages. And that's why you find still the knowledge being present. Although the knowledge of the sun gods has been very, very confused and diluted throughout the ages. So when you go further into the tra Chinese tradition, what do you find? <laughs> the I Ching. How many I Ching symbol is there? Sixty-four. Uh huh. And remember now the Yin and the Yang we saw is a double torus. You'd be missing the geometry of the vacuum in the middle of singularity. But the 64 symbols of the I Ching gives you this. How? When I found this, I thought, oh, this is so sweet. <laughs> it took me weeks, took me months to actually figure it out. I knew there was 64 symbols, but what did the symbols say? The symbols typically are arranged in a circle, the 64 symbols. Can you turn off your light a little bit so maybe you can see the symbols? Maybe not. They're here. The 64 of them. And each of them are actually um, composed of full sticks and broken sticks. And each of the symbols are in opposition. So like 1 and 64, 2 and 63, they're all in opposition. And I realized, wait a minute, if you take six thick Um, you put them in 3D space, which geometry would you get? Tetrahedron. A tetrahedron. That's the only geometry you can generate out of sti six sticks. But then why the broken sticks? Well, if you're following the code of the I Ching that tells you the sticks are in opposition, then you're going to need broken sticks. Watch this. Boom, 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 boom. You see? You need broken sticks to do the polar opposite of the tetrahedron. They have to be broken because the sticks intersect. Could you do that again with a light off because you can't see it as well? Okay. Yeah, we don't need lights, period. Well, the video does. Boom, boom. Can everybody see this? Mm -hmm. You need a broken stick to go in between the other sticks to generate the opposite polar uh, structure, which is given by the code itself. Isn't that sweet? And so you take the code, and I didn't have time to do the whole animation I didn't finish on that I will when I get better fun <laughs> the you see if you keep doing this and you follow the code you're gonna be able to do the whole 64 tetrahedron grid actually after you finish the code of 64 sticks of 64 code each one making a tetrahedron you will have made the 512 grid which is the next fractal level from 64. So if you actually follow the I Ching code, which is the trigram with eight first, 
and then the 64 exagrams, right? And you generate the, the 512, then you follow the exact progression. Cool? So, do we have evidence of the sun gods? We do. You know, imagine again that you were to find an old, a little beady planet in the corner of the galaxy somewhere, and that beady planet is not very evolved. Like, let's say you show up and they're like still in cave and not very involved. Um, you'd probably want to try to help them along, right? So what would you do? You can't really come to the surface, you know, stop one of the cavemen and start talking to him about physics. It doesn't really work. The caveman's probably going to look at you and try to bunk you on the head, right? So what would you do? You'd probably give them symbols, right, that have embedded in them very, very important information about the structure of the universe. And you'd expect that as that civilization grow and reach higher and higher levels, they would be able to decode those codes that was given to these uh, ancient people. Especially if you make the code in, in, uh, uh, covered with all sorts of religious belief and so on, so that the code survive all of the ages. To make sure that they understand this is a sacred code and all this stuff, so that they would transfer the information throughout the ages. Well, we have evidence of these sun gods. These are skulls that are found in temples in South America. This was found, this is uh, in the Peruvian Museum. Um, I call it con Conhead. Um, it uh, when the archaeologists found this, they said, oh, this is the result of skull deformation. <laughs> you know how the ancient tradition, they would bend their head to deform them? Now, they did do that. You know, this is the bust of Nanfertiti, for instance. Um, Tutankhamen did have a distorted, deformed head. There's many skulls like that. But what, when you read the ancient text and they say, um, they talk about deforming their head, they say that they did that to imitate the sun god, to become sun gods themselves. Now, if you deform your head, right, today, it doesn't matter how much you deform it you will never be able to exceed the volume capacity of your skull. Your head might look really weird, but the volume inside will be exactly the same. In these cases, the volume of these skulls, the inside volume of these skulls, are over twice the natural volume of the human skull the normal volume of a human skull. These are not the result of skull deformation. You cannot do that by deforming your skull. The other thing that's interesting is that the hole at the bottom of the skull here where the atlas goes in, the spine, tells you how big the person was, right? Because you can figure it out from the size of the spine. These people had to be between 12 and 15 feet tall. 
there was giants on the earth. Many ancient texts talks about the sun gods as being giants. These are very, very big people. Um, and the fact that there's multiple of these skulls found in temples all around South America tells you that it's not the result of some deformation. Uh, no, uh, not that I know of. There might be, I don't know. That'd be a really cool thing to have. And you can see on some of these skulls that they've carved right into the skulls. 